Hi there, this is Roman the Keller Golfer and I cannot tell you how happy I am today to show you around one of my favorite courses of all times, which is Valderrama Golf Club. Trent Jones Jr. in 1987. Since then the club has been through some of the refurbishments, um, main subject being the bunkers. They change the shape uh, quite frequently, so you never know what you're going to get. And, but uh, if you have a look at some of the videos which are posted by Valderrama Golf Club, you will find them in one of my um, playlists on my page. You see that the refurbishments which are done regularly once or twice a year are the reason for the immense quality of this club. I would personally say that Valderrama has probably the highest standard of maintenance which I've ever experienced on a golf course on, a given, on any given date. Right now it's, it's actually February while the rest of Europe is still under snow and everything like that. And you will see that this course is already playable as it would be any given day of the year. Of course, when the Aldenaltia Valderrama Masters happen, the course is even in better shape. So this is the view that the pros face during the Aldenaltia Valderrama Masters and of course the Ryder Cup. The Ryder Cup was here in 97 and it was just a wonderful experience with all the big names at this time. Even Tiger was there pretty young at this time. Um, the captain was Severiano Ballesteros, Jose Mariola, Sabal, Bernard Lange, all the guys we know today were there. Probably know from my introductory videos I will not play the black tees. Simply because the course is, although the course is not that long, from the black tees is just very very tough. You also know that I kind of like the, the ladies European tour and how the girls are playing it. They usually take the yellow tees, so, um, but the, the white ones are the ones that I usually play all the time and I think that's uh, pretty much fun. But please again, please choose the tees whichever appropriate to you. The course is also fun from the yellow and I have to admit it's even fun from the reds when I join my kids from there. So it um, doesn't get any easier from there. So off we go. So welcome to the first tee. Unfortunately it's not an easy start. You'll see it's pretty narrow and there's one thing to watch out on the first tee. Valderrama has two types of winds. There's either Levante, which is coming from the east, from the seaside, or Poniente, which is coming from the, from the inside. And today it's more a little bit of the Levante wind, so it's coming from this side. So I don't want to be carried over to the left side into the trees behind me. On the other hand, I don't want to be too far on the right because you don't have a shot into the green, but I'll show you that later. So here you see roughly the driving zone. The flag is, let's see, somewhere between the trees and those are pretty high. So the danger is if you're too far to the right, let's say the right edge of the fairway, which would be here, they immediately see you can't get it up even if it's only 110 or something, 120 meters. <laughs> Yes, new year, flag is in. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try. I'll leave it in today. The other thing is, I might talk about greens sometimes, um, especially like those ones where it's necessary, like the first. The whole green slopes back to front. 
and actually to the foreground and everything like that. You see it, but it's even more than you expect. So watch out with all putts which come from the top side. It is very fast. Usually Valderrama plays about nine, nine and a half stimp on a regular throughout the year basis. And they put it up until something like 11 during the tournaments. But then it depends how, how hard the greens are because then it's getting just too tough. It's pretty undulated and fast and a lot of fun. So here on the second hole we have two possibilities. I personally hit it straight towards the screen mid because everything bounces to the left afterwards. But if you're shorter or can keep it or want to keep it to the right, don't worry, there's also a way to the green from the right side. I heard some people saying they're about 1,500 core feet. I actually think there are more of them because you always find some free being in your way if you don't hit the top. So in my opinion you have two possibilities here. Either is try to hit it up or punch it below. Let's see how we do. So the third actually has two tea boxes. One, the black one is back here. I'm standing on one of the two white tees. And today we're playing from over there. Anyhow, this is a view from the auxiliary white tee, about the same distance. to the pin and I usually say a shot of 150 meters to the middle of the green is all you want to do here. So it's still a par 5 for us amateurs with 488 meters and an elevated green over water. It's difficult enough and I'm certainly happy if I hit it in 3. Nevertheless, it's worth mentioning that the European Tour once did the fastest hole in the world on this hole and they played it as a par 4. Have a look at that video, I think it's hilarious. So one thing on the aiming, if there's no wind like today, you can hit it pretty straight on. For me, it's those palm trees in the back, three or four of them. That's why I want to hit it. So that was a more than decent tee shot. You have all the chances in the world to try to hit it down but on the right side. You go directly to the green, there's a lot of rubbish stuff on the left, I'll show you later on. Anything to the right is good. There used to be a bunker or another green actually, an auxiliary green. That's the way you want to aim it. Unless you're a European tour professional and go for the green in two from 230 meters of course. ended up just perfectly. Nevertheless, now the fun starts. It's a pretty intimidating shot. I got 66 to the flag. From that angle it's something like 65 to the beginning of the green and in front of that is water. It's an elevated green as you see. Today the flag is on the lower part of the hole. We have another one on the top one. Today is Levante so we had helping wind and this hole doesn't really matter unless you are long enough to hit the bunker. Oh, by the way, out of that bunker, <laughs> see, have a look at my other videos. From that bunker over the pond onto an elevated green, that's maybe the toughest bunker shot on this course.
may hear due to the wind noises today the wind against us. So I will not try to carry any of those bunkers on the left, usually from the wind from behind it's possible, but watch out. If it's too far down, not a good idea. So when it's wind from the back, I put not more than 200 or something. Today I'm happy if I do it, so just straight on out of the bunker. So 123 left to the pin. With the green you have to watch out for two things. Today the flag is on the left and pretty much in the middle of the green runs a slope about a couple of centimeters deep. So there's a two-tiered green left and right. If the flag is on the right, especially if it's behind this tree, take your medicine, stay left of it. Because everything will run down to the right and if you want to hit it, the bunkers around it, pretty difficult shot. So this is supposed to be the easier side of the green. Nevertheless, I think it's about four meters wide. So you want to hit it pretty straight into that. And although it's a short shot into the green, usually for the pros too, uh, we have seen all kinds of shots during the years. Ay caramba! That's exactly what I meant. You see that the slope is going around pretty much on that straight on angle where I put the camera. I landed up right off the flag from where I was coming from, left from this side, and see what happened. I think that was a pretty good shot though, but it ended up down there. So don't be fooled by the beauty of this little and rather short par 3. It's, in my opinion, the most difficult green on course. I take anything which is on the green and then see how the putting goes. And I know from some of the tour pros that they feel exactly the same. Seriously, good score. Strategically, it's straightforward. You see the green, you know where, where to hit it or where to go. The problem sometimes is the wind. It should come to the left, but the wind has slowed down. There's hardly any breeze. So today, just a straight shot. But if the wind is blowing either from left or right, it uh, doesn't make it easier. a really excellent t-shirt but I still got 190 meters to the pin. Welcome to the shortest par 4 on the course. Although it only plays 296 meters, I regard it as one of the trickier ones. Depending on the wind, it's quite difficult to hit in between those little small areas. 
and believe me you do not want to exceed the 200 at a max because if you're going too far towards that single tree in the background it's getting then you will not be able to hit the green in any shot of course if you're called uh, John Rahm that you can try to, hit, uh, to attack the green directly from here I have seen him trying that in practice rounds and he actually made it but um, I hit a short one just somewhere to the middle and see if I have a good positioning into the green From here you have no real shot into the green, so rather keep it short. The special thing about the nines is that the fairway is, how do you call it, opposite bowl shape. So it's not this way like a bowl, it's the opposite. So as, as every tee shot, which is not exactly in the middle, either left or right, tends to roll towards the edges and towards the semi-rough. So that makes it a pretty difficult hole to drive actually. So the green is elevated and that was not enough club, should have used one more, probably rescue a little wood. Still from 170 in, but as I said the green is elevated and I'm just uh, on the basis of the fog green. So here we go. I told you that my approach shot was too short from 170 in, so I ended up somewhere here. We probably rolled down because anything which is about a meter short runs down on these four greens where pretty many clubs I know would be happy if they have that stuff on their green. Uh, but personally I think there are three different ways of playing it. One is going up of course with the sandwich, um, maybe the most difficult one. But you could also use a putter or something like a six iron or a rescue, um, whatever you're fine to. You need to get the ball up into the green and then afterwards it slopes down to the right. So that's not an easy task. Took three balls, let's see what you like most. was a lip out but too far away. It's still rolling. <laughs> Off the green. If you miss your green in Valderrama with the second, it's very difficult to make a par. So you have to live with your bogey then. Hope you enjoyed the first nine, but let's immediately go on to the second nine. <laughs> 